generous person to know, Alexandra. What's going on, everybody? This is Sean with Strangeland Oddities. We're at the New Jersey Horror Con with Andrew Devolve. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Um, so, in the first Wishmaster, what was it like working with the icons, Robert oh, England, oh, Kane Hodder, oh, and Tony Todd? What a treat. What a treat for, uh, for a young actor, uh, you know, coming up. Had done a couple of things, uh, but to, uh, to get the lead sort of... Uh, you know, I, I want to call him a lead uh, uh, actor, but but really a villain uh, was absolutely wonderful. And the fact that uh, that Robert England, uh, Tony Todd, Kane Hodder, Reggie Bannister, uh, Buck Flowers, I mean, I I, I, I I go on. The fact that they showed up and were so uh, so willing to help make this work uh, to this day, it uh, it means a lot to me. And every time uh, I see every, each and every one of them. Uh, not Buck Flowers, of course. Uh, we're missing him. He's uh, he's gone. But uh, it's all it's as if uh, you know we had just finished the movie a week ago and we catch up and uh, we're still all of us, even though we we don't hang out. You know, uh, we're still friends. We see each other at cons and so you know. I just uh, to this day, I uh, a thousand thanks for for them showing up. Yeah, that's one thing that Bill Moses says. He says the reason he loves doing horror cons because he gets to meet all of his friends that he hasn't seen in a long yeah, time. Yeah. Um, now, I was reading that uh, you speak eight different languages. Yes, yeah. Um, now, a uh, fan question. Uh, someone wanted you to say in, in the gin voice of uh, Wishmaster, be careful what you wish for in eight different languages. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to write that one in. <laughs> I, I would have loved to get that up front, and I would have, uh, would have made sure everything was correct. But, uh, uh, yeah. If I, you uh, just want to do English, that's fine. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've done numerous like TV roles like CSI Miami, uh, Criminal Minds, Law & Order, SVU. You've been on Burn Notice, Walker, Lost, which is a very popular series. Um, you just did The Blacklist and many, many more. What's your favorite television role to, to play? You know, um, I, I, you know, you mentioned CSI Miami. Uh, I, I, I had a, I had a fun time on that, and 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 as you know, and as as the fans know, I tend to, I tend to do a lot of the uh, uh, nefarious characters, the 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 bad guy, as it as it mm -hmm. were. Uh, and I uh, have a lot of fun doing that. I just, uh, you know, for instance, meeting David Caruso was a real treat. He was a gentleman. I love David. Caruso. Oh, he's he's wonderful. He was wonderful to work with, and um, and so just just the fact that uh, you know, uh, an actor's uh, a sort of life and lifestyle is all about you know what's what's coming next um, and keeping your fingers crossed for it and so uh, when 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 we land roles it's like wow you know we're we're kids again and we're in seventh mm -hmm. heaven and and it's it's almost like uh, each time out you don't you don't expect to get the role and then uh, then you do and it's uh, all over again it's like uh, you know Christmas Day opening up the presents and all that so oh it's it's wonderful and I I truly do enjoy uh, uh, playing the bad guy, the quote-unquote bad guy, <laughs> really doing all of them. And you do a damn good job at it too. Well, thank you. And and I, and, and and just to, to sort of round off the, the the question, I really love doing the accents. I, I love uh, it, it's sort of uh, I liken it to um, Wishmaster was interesting. It was it was a bit intimidating, uh, knowing that y you know you you're you're presenting this 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 regal genie and and you better bring it and mm -hmm. and so there, there's a bit of nervousness the mask helped uh, to hide that and so in a sense um, doing the accents is also kind of a masking the real me and so I get to travel away from me and and explore uh, other characters person uh, personages personalities and so um, but as I say it all hinges for me on on being the uh, the antagonist Right. Now, you were in the Wishmaster 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason you didn't do the other ones? Well, I won't, uh, I won't uh, uh, get too far into, uh, uh, you know, uh, speaking ill of, uh, of, of 3 and 4, but it, it just didn't seem to me that, uh, that uh, 
from what I read and from what uh, what we had discussed, it didn't seem like they were investing um, them sort of the uh, the love that uh, the first two had. Right. And and by love, I mean I mean you know this is about the fans and it's about um, uh, continuing a tradition, if you will, a legacy uh, that was established certainly by the first one and 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 the second one, and then to really steal the uh, the joy from the crowd. I thought by not giving them. Um, special effects by not making it more magic or, or at least attempting to make it more magic than the first two had been I felt uh, I, I, I couldn't really be part of that right so if they offered you uh, another wish master role would you take it I would um, I, I, I would I would you know keep my fingers crossed and hope that Lionsgate would do a, a number five um, and certainly I would uh, I would take it and, uh, and we would talk and as long as the the love for for the uh, the piece and for the uh, uh, the legacy of that, uh, I kind of dislike the word franchise, but right. okay, so be it, franchise, uh, yeah, I would I would certainly consider it, but but the love for it would have to be there. Now, with your your uh, role as Mikhail in the, in the show Lost, which mm. became super popular, mm. um, did you expect that show to be as popular <laughs> as it is, and was it really <laughs> physical on your body? Playing the, the role. It, it was physical, wonderfully physical, and, and it's and it's beautiful to to experience that while you're, you know, while you're submersed in a in a character. Let me put it this way: I didn't think I'd come back after stepping up into the lens and looking into it. I I didn't think I'd be back, and so for me to uh, <laughs> to go back, and I never knew it was sort of a, um, every time. So so I think I think what happened is is. Uh, I think everyone was was a bit surprised about how how well the character was received. I think there was a bit of uh, trepidation as far as the uh, the eye patch. Uh, the, the people might have thought uh, that uh, that was a bit uh, mm, overboard, perhaps. But uh, you know, if the character, if 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 it's grounded, if it's well written, which uh, Carlton Cuse and Mr. Lindelof and crew. Um, they were wonderful about uh, really fleshing that that character out, patchy as I call him. Um, and I, uh, I thank my lucky stars. It changed my life. It, it changed my lifestyle. Uh, and uh, and just being on that island with uh, with my ohana, I have a lot of friends still there. Nice. And uh, and I just uh, I, I keep in touch. And these are these are locals, and they were part of the magic. They made it magic. Nice. Mm. Now, there's a fun fact that I found out about you that you have a um, a voiceover in two games, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops and mm -hmm. Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Mm -hmm. How how was that? Well, it was wonderful. You know, I I, uh, I was also uh, uh, lucky enough to um, to actually do the, the 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 body work too. I had the you know the the, the light suit on, a little you know beaded suit. Um, and that was uh, that was it was very cool. I, I don't know that I was uh, the first, but I, I believe I was the first character to do the, uh, the the body. In other words, the body was modeled after me. I was wearing the suit and to do the voice. And so it was uh, it was fun. It was fun, and it was physical as well. And uh, probably about the size of the room we're in now. Um, and so it uh, it's amazing what uh, the uh, the sort of the landscape they can put down in an area this big. It, it just blew my mind. I I couldn't conceptualize what what it was going to become, what it was going to be. And when I did see it, I wow, I was I was amazed. Yeah. Nice. Now I was also reading that you're an artist. I am. Uh, you do sculpting and, I do. and oil painting. I do. Uh, do you just do it as a hobby? Do you sell it or? Um, I do. I do. As a matter of fact, I uh, I'm wearing. This ring, I made. I made this ring. Um, this is uh, that's 200 hours of sculpting on that. That's two ounces of silver, and uh, and I do sell that. I did a uh, an updated version of it, uh, and this is the uh, the version with the garnet in the forehead. Uh, the garnet is the same cut as the uh, fire opal in the movie, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to implant that in his forehead. Wow. Um, so yeah. So so I, I I do it really as an escape. Uh, art is an escape, uh, and and uh, be it uh, acting or, or sculpting. This, as I say, was 200 hours, and sometimes oh, wow. I would uh, I would carve for 10 hours a day because there, there you know there was nothing going on, and then so I would uh, sort of finish the day and look at it, and to me it, it seemed that it hadn't changed, and I would just, it was, just, <laughs> it, was it was oppressive almost, and but uh, but finally. 
Um, and, and, and sculptors say, I, I believe it was Michelangelo who said that he, he didn't sculpt as much as find uh, uh, the, the character of the stone and chip away what didn't need to be there. And that's, that's a cool way to look at it. And so I eventually it, 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 it chipped away, it flaked away. I was using dental tools, and this was a jeweler's wax, first time carving in that. And, uh, and you know, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of so proud to be able to look at that and... Is there anywhere place that your fans can buy it? Oh yeah, you know, um, check uh, check my Facebook page out. It has a connection, uh, official Andrew Deboff, and uh, and I uh, I support a lot of uh, charities. Uh, I do uh, I do a, a brew of beer called Gin's Hella Brew, uh, oh. coincidentally, and uh, and I uh, I've been pouring now for four years up at my home, Lake Arrowhead. So we do the brew fest up there. Uh, this year it'll be in August, August 11th. And, uh, and I raise money for the Mountain Film and Theater Arts Committee, which gives scholarships to local high school kids to pursue their dreams in the arts. Oh, and uh, and so I am, I've decided to make a, uh, an honest brewer of myself and am uh, going to be getting a license and uh, opening up a brewery tap room. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. where, where's that going to be located? That'll be in Crestline, California. Crestline, California. And uh, I will be keeping uh, uh, the crowd uh, sort of posted uh, through my uh, uh, official Andrew Deboff Facebook and Instagram, uh, same, same address. And, uh, you know, little by little. Right now I'm doing, I'm posting, uh, which gives me 30 days to, to put up a public notice about what I intend to do. And after which uh, another 15 or so days, maybe 20, I'll have the uh, the license. Um, long story short, there's there's a bit of trouble with the zoning issue, so I'm I'm starting with a beer wholesaler's license. But I figure by this time, certainly next year, uh, my beer gins hella brew, and I have a a, a stout uh, that's called uh, Mystic Mast Black Rum Stout, and so those should be on the shelf by this time next year. Oh, nice. I'll keep everybody posted too. Excellent. Definitely got to look for that. And two more questions. Yeah. Um, now, can you tell your fans about your newest film, which is uh, Demons, mm. and you have one in the works called Blood Flower? Uh, uh, well, Blood Flower is, is still being talked about, and so that uh, that's uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear more about that. But okay. uh, uh, Demons was quite uh, quite wonderful. It was um, it was filmed in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and uh, and that's uh, Brett Favre's town. And uh, what a what a beautiful community. Uh, and Miles Doliak was wonderful to work with. Uh, the, the wonderful thing about that, uh, he uh, he's a professor of Latin uh, and of, uh, of, uh, of ancient studies, and uh, and it was so beautiful. Not only to to he he helped me get as close to uh, an honest Southern accent as I could, um, and then he also helped immensely with uh, the character speaks does prayers in Latin. And was immensely helpful uh, uh, with with the Latin. I learned a lot, which was is always beautiful. Uh, and so I have uh, I have a lot of uh, yeah a lot of goodwill and good feelings about having worked there. It was a uh, it was a very whirlwind thing, very very quick. Um, and so it was very intense to have to learn all of that and put it all in, into the into the movie. And so uh, I mean, uh, wonderful cast, wonderful crew. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, please do check it out. And that is a, uh, a Miles Doliak uh, production, Historia Films. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I just uh, the, the 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 young leading lady Lindsay was wonderful as well. Uh, and so I'm just um, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm really happy to 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 count that among the uh, the arrows in my quiver. Nice. And it, I actually just watched uh, another one of your new films called The Hatred. Oh, The Hatred, yes. That, Wonderful. That was and, a great movie. Well, thanks so much. I, I appreciate that. And that, uh, that again, goes back to what I was saying about accents. I love doing the accents. And this was a very sort of a, a creepy, uh, very secretive uh, guy whose story comes out through the... Uh, uh, throughout the film, and um, and is he's referred back to, and uh, I, uh, I I just I had a we sh we filmed in Newhall Ranch, which is about uh, about an hour outside of uh, of California, and it was uh, it was actually it was really really quite wonderful to be there, a beautiful working ranch uh, still, uh, I think it uh, it's right next to Valencia, and and it used to be all of Valencia. It was a quite a big ranch. It used to be in California that uh, people who yeah, staked it out, you know, staked it out big time, had their big ranches, and this one has survived uh, through all these 200 years, I believe it's been around. But, um, yeah, very, very, very cool show. Uh, I just uh, uh, miss uh, Shimashko and uh, Darby Ann Walker. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful 
bright talent uh, she is and was. She was on The Voice for a little bit, Darby Ann Walker. Oh, okay. I don't know if you, you remember her, but, uh, but truly a wonderful talent. And, uh, and just the whole crew, uh, it, was, uh, it was directed uh, by Michael uh, Kehoe and, uh, and produced by Malika Khad. Uh, a friend and uh, and of course from Halloween fame, uh, and I uh, yeah as I say I have uh, I have great memories from both of those. Thanks for bringing them up. <laughs> no, yeah. not a problem. And last but not least, after this convention, uh, what are your plans? Well, uh, as uh, you know, I mentioned uh, the brewery. I'm I am in the middle of getting that going, so I'm going to go back and do that. We're, uh, we're we've got the uh, the Lake Arrowhead Brewfest coming up in August, and so uh, I'm I'm raising uh, money for that for the scholarships. And I was here uh, uh, raising money with the T-shirts. I don't know if you saw the T-shirt yesterday, yes, the red one. Uh, you'll see it uh, if you go to the page to uh, to the Facebook page. And so I've managed to raise a little over two hundred dollars for uh, Operation Provider. Um, which is a, a food and clothing bank uh, up on the mountain, and they, they do great work. They put on a, a, a Christmas dinner for the local uh, local community, and uh, and uh, you know the, the, the kids and, and the families come in, and they get a bag of toys, and it's 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 really quite rewarding to be part of that. So oh, nice. that's kind of like what I'm concentrating. I'm, I'm a little ahead of uh, of the game here. I want to make sure that uh, come August that that we have the scholarships for next year. Uh, in place. Uh, right now, we'll be giving out our second annual. Oh, nice. So I'm really, uh, really happy about that. And that's uh, that's through uh, Three Marm Brewing, which is my brewery. Um, and just in case for all of you asking, well, what the heck is a marm, or what's that have to do with? We, uh, uh, the group of us, uh, used to work in a in a logging crew. I ran a a, a little logging crew. We had a crane and uh, we had a climber cutter. A guy who would, you know, get up the uh, the trees and, and limb the branches, limb the trees first, and then, you know, from the top, cut Fun it, uh, chop it down. <laughs> yeah, it really, it kind of was. I was a, a, a glorified groundman. I'd, I'd just make sure the ropes and didn't get tangled in the bushes and all of that. And uh, it was quite, uh, quite dangerous work, but it was, uh, again, very, very rewarding. I, uh, I'm big on uh, on the San Bernardino Forest and the fact that. Uh, well, we're we're having our water, and it's happening all all over the country. Where uh, you know, big big companies are coming in and stealing the water, essentially, and degrading uh, the forests by by sucking the life out of them. Um, the truth of it is that a, that a forest, uh, a healthy forest, has 50 trees an acre. The San Bernardino Mountains have 500. So so for all practical purposes, these are standing weeds, 100 foot tall weeds. And, uh, and we, we can't get into the forest to thin it, to cut it down. Um, I would rather see locals, I'd rather see uh, uh, jobs for locals happen, as opposed to big companies coming in and essentially wanting to clear cut because it's convenient for them. Uh, and so that this is, as you can tell, I get a little riled up about it. Uh, it's, an important, uh, uh, it's important for me. So I have uh, uh, designed a beer that I call Lager Lager. And basically, it's L O G G E R L A G E R, and uh, and one of my most favorite things. I mean, and I, it was hard work, and especially if you're, you're cutting a tree uh, in a swale, and you've got you, you get your rounds that are probably 18 inch diameter, 20 inch diameter, and they're probably 18 inches uh, high, tall, and you got to roll these up a hill. And uh, after about 50 or so, you've had a darn good workout. Then you've piled them in the uh, in the uh, trailer, and you're going to the dump to dump them off. And after that, mm -hmm. the thing that we looked forward to the most was a beer. And so we, uh, I came up with this, uh, we call it uh, lovingly trugger, uh, tree hugger, and, uh, and, and I, I really look at this as, as, as being, uh, you know, you, you have to think and you have to, you have to be smart, and, and I, would, I, I would love to see uh, these acres of forest thinned to the point where there were 50 trees as opposed to 500 that would give work to the locals, put some, uh, put some cash in their pockets so they could feed themselves and their families and, and feel good about hard work. And so, uh, you know, little by little, and this, this beer that we're putting out, uh, I, I say it's, uh, it's almost like, uh, like taking a sip of, uh, of uh, mountain fresh air. It was actually brewed with spruce needles in it. Oh, wow. And so you get a little hint of pine in there. And that's, it's absolutely beautiful. So I can't wait to get that out. That beer, a percentage of what we sell of it, will go to uh, a SOFA, Save Our Forest Association. Uh, that is a local uh, local association up on the mountain, and uh, we will be supporting them. Nice. Yeah.
So, all you people that see Andrew in movies and TV as a bad guy... I am. You can see he is a genuine guy. Hmm. A yeah. genuinely bad guy. Genuinely <laughs> bad guy. Again, Andrew, I do thank you for oh, taking the time you, here. Thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. It's I been an honor. That. Thank and, you, And uh, definitely thank you for informing the fans on everything that you thank just you did. Thank you for listening and paying attention and uh, caring even just a little bit. Exactly. We're at New Jersey HorrorCon. 2018 in New Jersey. Strangeland Oddities is out here. Thank you.